Well, good morning. Welcome to Debbie's Back Porch. You know, I cook a lot of keto recipes because I eat low carb. And I just don't think eating low carb should mean that you don't get any of the good stuff. So I do a fair number of experiments in my kitchen. And I'm going to share one of those with you now. I've set up a little science experiment here. Uh just to show you how I determined which of the artificial sweeteners I would use on my keto cream brulee. I really miss having cream brulee, uh, but without the caramelized sugar on the top, it's not cream brulee. It's just a really good, rich custard which is nothing to sneeze at, but it's not creme brulee. So, here's what I have. This first sample is uh, xylit xylitol, and it is something that I got, I was looking at Swerve, and I got this instead, which I actually think Swerve is erythritol, but this is uh, xylitol, and then here is monk fruit, and this is um, what you normally see. It's not pure monk fruit. Uh, it has, I believe, erythritol. And this is sucrin, which also has, this is sucrin gold, which also has erythritol. And this is a generic Splenda. And please, I, don't post comments about what you think about Splenda. This is an experiment just to compare caramelization properties. And then this is the old standard sugar. And so many of us don't eat sugar at all anymore no, uh, as an added um, ingredient. I keep it for, for the kids to have in their coffee when they come. So what we're gonna do is we're going to see how these um, caramelize. So I put them here in this oven safe dish and I got out my trusty torch which I may have to stop and fill it up. I'm ah, gonna have to fill it up. wrong. It's fine. So, I'm going to start with the sugar. And you always want to be up above it. You don't want to be right on it. But this is a sugar in the raw. And you can smell it. It has a wonderful candy smell. And you go around and around. And you can see that as you do this, it melts. And that's basically what caramel is, is melted sugar. And I'm getting a little bit too close. But if you put this on top of your creme brulee and hit it with the torch, it'll make a crust. So that when you cut into your creme brulee, I'm burning it, let me stop. When you cut into your creme brulee, um, it crunches. You, you break through, makes a crust. So next I'm going to see how the xylitol, I may have a little bit too much xylitol there how the xylitol caramelizes. And I did research on these before I started. I didn't just out of the blue do these with no idea of what would happen. I actually did a couple of them beforehand 
so that I would see. Now, I don't know if you can see this, but the xylitol is melting. It isn't browning. I think it will, but it's melting. Yeah, it's not browning. Okay, it's melted, it's still white. And we're gonna come back to it in a bit and see what kind of crust it made. So here's the monk fruit. Well, it's definitely melting. Quicker than the xylitol, actually quicker than the sugar. It's melting very nicely. You see how it's running right there? But it also is not browning. Of course it started out brown so it will still make a nice brown top on your creme brulee. We're gonna see how it whether or not it makes a crust. It should be almost like candy once it cools off. So now let's try the sucrin. You know I did the sucrin last night as a sort of pre-experiment experiment. experiment. So I know it's going to brown, well, it, it won't actually burn and brown, but it looks browner than the monk fruit when you're done. And it melts and then it makes a hard crust and I sat here last night and ate it like candy. It was so good. So, this is the sucrin, and it melts nicely. It also does not brown. It doesn't get, you know, I probably put a little bit too much heat on this sugar. But the sucrin, the monk fruit, and um, the xylitol don't burn. They don't toast. They don't get brown. But the, the sucrin ends up with a nice dark color. So I'm going to try Splenda and we all know this is not going to work. Splenda does not caramelize but I haven't tried it and so I don't know it for sure yet. Ooh, it burns and smokes. You know, I love the taste of Splenda, and I use it in most things. But in some things, the difference you get in your finished product. Whoops, look at that. It caught on fire. You cannot caramelize Splenda. So what I'm going to do is let this all sit here for just a minute, and then we're going to test it for crunch and taste. And I'll be right back. Okay, so let's see. Well, you know, this sugar, the only part of it that's caramelized, that's crunchy, is what was right on top. And that's sugar in the raw. Um, plain granulated sugar might You hear that? And you know, I haven't eaten sugar in so long really does not taste good to me. This is the xylitol. I'm letting you hear the crunch. So this is the xylitol. It's melted, it's made a crust, but it has no color. So that sort of rules it out for creme brulee, but let's taste it.
It's nice and crunchy. And it tastes minty. That's the reason I don't actually use the plain xylitol in things like coffee. It adds a minty flavor. This is the monk fruit. And you know, I really like monk fruit. I use it often as a substitute for brown sugar. It's not quite as brown. So let's taste this and let me, I'm gonna let you hear the crunch. Mmm. Mm -mm. That's good. Tastes like candy. This is the sucrin. And just so you know, the sucrin is what I had already decided on. Because as I say, I tested it last night. Got a nice crust. I have to wait until I get rid of the monk fruit before I taste the sucrin. I mean, this is not a wine tasting, but the taste is pretty important in cream brulee. Mm-mm. You know, I have to say, this is far and away the best. Um, for this, it, um, I like the monk fruit in many things, but the sucrin has more, it has a taste that's more like sugar. Um, makes a nice crust, but not such a hard crust that you couldn't just break it with your spoon. So, I'm not going to try this Splenda mess, even though it's my sweetener of choice for many things, coffee, hot tea. I don't eat the sugar. The erythritol does not have the right appearance for creme brulee. Monk fruit would be my second choice for creme brulee. But sucrin is going to be so good. So, I hope you find this helpful. I did this because when I went searching for the information myself to try to make a decision, I couldn't find anything that really told me what I was looking for. So there you go. A comparison of the caramelization traits of xylitol, monk fruit, Sucrin, Splenda, and sugar over there. It's the outsider. We don't eat sugar around here. Thank you for joining us on Debbie's Back Porch. I'll see you later when I actually finish up the creme brulee.